uh, getting ready to show you guys a quick dynamic warm-up uh, that we like to have a lot of our athletes do uh, before they do any sort of uh, physical exercise. So uh, the goal for this is to start with some muscle activation, move through some transit skills, uh, and then go into some dynamic stretching. So Dale's just warming up right here, some very easy jogs, back pedal. So typically everything you're going to do is going to be within a 10 yard uh, to 15 yard area and then he goes into some skips here focus here is on keeping the feet pulled up staying light on the feet notice opposite arm and leg are working together there's a lot of coordination involved with this skipping stuff now he's going to go into a side slide starting to activate the lateral movement muscles warming the hips up and coming back with it same thing right here he's focusing on keeping his toes forward making sure he's not twisting at the hips or shoulders and now he's going to go into some dynamic uh, stretching here. He's doing some arm hugs, or Michael Phelpsians, as we like to call them. And there's the side view of it. And now he's going into some long arm swings. Focus here is on getting a good range of motion through that shoulder. Really starting to loosen that upper body up. And now he's going to some big arm circles, moving forward with it. Notice he's keeping his palms up. He's staying nice and tall through the core here and transitioning into a reverse arm circle. Again, still staying tall through the spine, no rotation through the hips here. And now the goal here is to get that heart rate back up again after he's done that flexibility work. These are going into A skips, staying tall, keeping a powerful body line. And he's coming back with it. Notice he's keeping the feet pulled up. These are called A skips because he's putting that knee up to block position or acceleration skip, so an acceleration mechanic. And now for this, he's doing trunk twists. Uh, you'll notice he's spread his feet apart here. And the focus here is to get a good range of motion through that core and through the hips. And now he's gonna do a very similar motion, only this time he's leaning over, engaging the hamstrings, stretching through the hamstrings and glutes. And again, really rotating through that core, getting that core ready to rock. Now he's going into a trunk circle. So the focus on this is to hit the hit a forward, right, left, and back movement. And he's really taking the hips through a giant range of motion here. So typically for this, you'll get four or five in one direction and then start uh, transitioning and moving in the opposite direction. If you really like these, which I personally do, you can do a few more of them. Notice he's keeping a nice flat back, or at least I hope you can see that, especially when he drives those hip backwards. He's keeping that nice flat back, making sure he's keeping a long stomach and not arching that spine, not letting that spine curl over on him. Now he's moving into a lateral skip. So again, he's pumping those knees up, stretching through the glutes and hamstrings a little bit here, and maintaining that good body position. You'll notice there's a pretty straight line from that that down heel all the way up through hip and shoulder and then up to ear. After that, he's going into some basic squats here. Feet are gonna be between shoulder and hip width. Notice as he's dropping down, he's starting to get a good range of motion here. If you need to start shallow with these squats and then increase your range of motion, go ahead. His hands are coming up to help him offset and make sure he's keeping that weight back in the heels. We want to try to de-stress those knees by shooting those hips back like, like he was doing. Now he's just doing a forward lunge, so he's stepping out and driving back up to the standing position. You'll notice his front knee is not diving out past his toe. He's maintaining pretty, maintaining pretty good vertical alignment of that lower limb. And you'll also notice that that opposite arm, just like when you run, is starting to come up as that leading leg steps forward. You'll also notice he's keeping a very upright body position. He's not letting himself bend at the hips. Same with this. Now he's going into a reverse lunge. So he's stepping backward with that foot. And again, you'll notice that front knee is not diving out past the toe. He's taking a big step backwards, maintaining a good upper body position, and again, coordinating that upper and lower body movement together.
Now with a wide stance, he's going into a squat lateral. So the difference between a squat and a lunge lateral is this, uh, in, in this he's not picking those feet up each time, but you'll notice he's really shooting that hip back, keeping the weight on the heel. And that's again, de-stressing that knee and really forcing you to activate the glute, the quad, uh, as well as a little bit of lower back activation here. The goal here is try to get chin, knee, and toe alignment when you're in that down position. Now he's moving into a heel toe raise. The tendency on this is to let the hip shoot back. We do not want the hip shooting back on this. Notice there's a straight line from ankle to knee to hip to shoulder. When he's rolling back on those heels and actively pulling those toes up, he's not allowing his hips to shoot back. He's keeping that straight, rigid body line. Now that he's gone through that head to toe movement, he's going to pick up his effort a little bit. He's going back to his run. And coming back with a skip into a forward lunge, a skip and scoop as we call it. You'll notice the difference on that is he did not hesitate when he was in that down position. He allowed his momentum to carry him forward. Now he's moving into a knee hug march, maintaining a good tall body position driving that knee up nice and high and then he's finishing off the upper portion of that movement with a squeeze just below his knee towards his chest. You should feel a nice stretch for the hamstrings and glutes with that exercise. Now he's moving into a quad stretch. Notice the quick heel flick so he's activating the hamstrings as he fires that heel and then he's stretching that quad. You'll notice as he's coming towards the camera you'll see his knee and hip alignment remains the same from that down position to the up position and he's keeping that tall upper body as well pushing those hips forward when he stretches that quad back into a little bit of higher effort movement again getting that uh, heart rate increasing another forward run there now he's going with a higher heel flick here maintaining a good knee position he's not letting the knees uh, fly forward on him flicking fast landing soft Now he's going into a straight leg march. A little tougher to tell from this position, but you can see opposite arm and leg are meeting. And he's trying to keep a tall body line, straight down leg, straight up leg. This is one that you can gradually increase that range of motion as you uh, do those forward straight leg marches. And now he's complementing that with an inverted toe touch. So pivot is happening at the hips. He's leading with the heel. The tendency on this is to let the upper body fall first. We want you focusing on leading with the heel and you should think of yourself almost like a human teeter-totter. You've got the down leg and you're pivoting right at that hip trying to keep your chest as square to the ground as you can. You don't want that heel hooking behind you. You want to maintain those good straight body angles. And he's going back into the skip and scoop here. So dropping that knee, letting his momentum from those skips carry him into a lunge. You'll notice every third skip, he's going down into that lunge. And he's scooping through, allowing that momentum to take him forward. Notice there's not much hesitation at the bottom there. Now he's going into a skip skip power skip, so a higher effort movement. The further you go along in these warm ups, the more you increase the intensity, the more you increase the range of motion. Started nice and easy with an easy jog and now we're going into a more power based explosive movement. Really punching that knee up, opposite arm, opposite leg. And now he's going into a sagittal leg swing. Started low and slow with the first few. Now you'll notice his rate of movement's increasing and his range of motion is also increasing. If you slow that down, you'll see he kept his foot dorsiflex the whole time. And by that we mean pulled up towards your shin. So you pull that foot up, you don't do any toe pointing here. You'll also notice he's maintaining a pretty solid body position. He's not allowing that upper body to fly forward or backward. He's not allowing that down leg to bend. Now he's going into a trail leg step over, really taking the hips through a big range of motion here. 
He's trying to get that knee up nice and high, kicking that knee behind him, and almost think about taking your knee through as big of a half circle as you can. Notice the shoulders aren't rotating. He's keeping shoulders pointing down the field, pointing down the direction of travel. And now he's just gonna follow that up with a reverse trail leg step over. Keeping that high knee, flicking that heel once, once the knee gets even with the body line, flicking that heel up and finishing up that movement. A lot of core activation in this. Also a good strength exercise. Uh, if you complement it with some ankle bands, Back in some higher intensity running. Notice his rate of speed is increasing. Started with that easy jog and now he's getting more towards a full sprint here. Right here he's going build up. He started slow uh, and more of a jog. As he increased speed, he ended up finishing off with the sprint and then easing off. Back to his side slides, again activating those lateral movement muscles. Keeping toes pointing perpendicular to direction of travel here. Don't let the toes open up. Don't let them twist towards the direction you're traveling. And that, folks, is a wrap. You know?